Hi, this is Josh Young with Bison Interests, and this is an update on the oil and gas M&A boom, as well as on vital energy. Please see this important disclaimer. This is not an offering nor a solicitation. So a bit about me and Bison. Bison is focused on investing in publicly traded oil and gas equities, and I am the chief investment officer, and I was chairman of the board of a public company that I helped turn around and sold for a large premium versus where it was trading before the offer. A little about Bison. Um, we focus on oil and gas investments, and we've done very well. And again, this is not an offer, but I think it's helpful to understand performance as you consider variant market views. In particular, on the bottom, we show this chart of performance since inception versus the S&P 600 energy, which is, we believe, our appropriate benchmark, as well as various ETFs, including the S&P 500, which we have significantly outperformed as of the end of February 2023. So, the oil market is quite tight despite headlines to the contrary, and I think it's important to keep that in mind when you see various uh, narratives and various other factors. Um, I, think, I think it's just important to, to keep in mind just how much oil has come out of storage in the last few years, as well as what the trajectory is, which is oil inventories globally declining and additional pressure to produce more oil. Similarly, on the OPEC plus spare capacity side, as OPEC has essentially run out of spare capacity, there's been increasing pressure globally to find and produce additional barrels. OPEC has recently cut some of their production, but there's still relatively limited spare capacity, which again frames what's happening in oil and gas markets, as well as capital expenditures in the industry. So there's a, a boom going on in oil and gas transactions. The latest big transaction was a approximately $4.5 billion acquisition of three different privately held oil companies, all held by NCAP, a private equity firm based here in Texas, um, as well as that firm buying uh, Bakken assets, so assets in North Dakota from Oventiv, as it looks like a, a way to partially fund the acquisition. So it was a large deal and the valuations were quite high relative to where publicly traded companies that are in the same area are trading. And this map shows the uh, significant overlap between Oventive's assets, the assets that Oventive bought, and Vital Energy, a company that we've talked about before and where Vital's assets are. When you look at how much Oventive paid, and you look at the potential upside to vital shares versus the transaction value, you get why it makes sense to look at this and think about it. Again, this isn't a recommendation to buy vital stock, and it's not a solicitation to invest in Bison. What it is is a call to consideration. It is a really interesting value differential, and, and really it, it makes you wonder, one, what, what's going on that drove this sort of premium purchase by Aventive? And two, what's it going to take for oil and gas public equity investors to buy stock that reflects the private market? Or what's it going to take for larger requirers to start making premium acquisitions of publicly traded companies? It is helpful to keep in mind the context of these transactions, which in addition to a tight oil market and limited OPEC plus spare capacity, it is helpful to understand that oil transactions have increased in valuation substantially even over the last year, going from about two times operating cash flow to this Aventive deal where our math is it was close to four times operating cash flow. That is a huge increase across a number of transactions. And it does seem like that valuation trajectory is up and to the right, which again is very promising if you're a smaller cap public or private oil company that's looking to sell assets at an increasingly high valuation. And again, from other perspectives, these smaller oil companies are still very cheap and they can even 
screen well on measures that historically only looked good for large companies like return on investment or like NAV per share at different oil prices. So there's a really significant value gap. We're highlighting Vital here partly because it's an offset and comparable company to the assets that were just purchased by Aventive and partly because it is, it is intriguing just how big the valuation gap is for Vital versus some of its peers. Again, don't rely on this. This is not a recommendation to buy Vital. And then one of the interesting things about Vital specifically outside of the transaction context is that their stock price fell precipitously over the last year as they had some operational issues. As they've resolved those issues though, the stock has not recovered. And so there, there may be this opportunity to public equity investors or to a buyer potentially uh, attempting to buy out Vital to be able to buy assets at a large discount to where they were trading as recently as a number of months ago. And that's it for now. Uh, if you uh, like this, please make sure to like it on whatever social media or YouTube if you find it there. And uh, be sure to follow us and let us know what you think. And thank you very much for your time.